Hey friends, today let's talk about phones. And I'm not talking about this kind of phone either. This is telephone, okay? It's funny that when I cleaned this up before I turned the camera on, I, I had this off for a while and I actually had the reaction that it's going to start beeping soon because I've had it off the hook for too long. Okay, that was fun. Let's talk about mobile phones. Now, I don't say cell phone. And the reason why is at the end of this video, I'll tell you a little bit of phone history and why I don't say the word cell anymore and why it bugs me when people do when it's not the mid-90s anymore. Okay, here, first. First on my big list of phones is the first phone I ever bought. Look at that. There. This is called Sony CM-H333. And the interesting thing about it is if you want to answer the phone or call out, you push the earpiece up. That's how you answer the phone. And then it reveals mobile telephone. How bold. And also it has this big mast you can pull up to get better reception. Look at me. I've got a cell phone. The battery's gone, but it would plug in here and then slide up and catch. And here was the release. And then it had up and down volume buttons. And the batteries had four notches along each side for your fingers. I would boldly carry this around. I had a corduroy jacket, kind of a V-neck jacket, almost like a, a suit coat, but not. it didn't have a collar like that. It had a pocket here, and I would carry this around in my pocket with the antenna up to show off. Look at me, I have a cell phone. Oh man, this thing was cool. Now the number I, I got took a long time. I bought this when I was in USA, knowing that I was coming to Taiwan, this would be more expensive. And that was a good choice. But when I got to Taiwan, a phone number for this was $37,000. And at the time, $26 was one US. Now it's 33. But $37,000 to get a phone number. I'm, I'm gonna wait, is what I thought. That was early 1997, actually December 96. And then by summertime, we had the Asian financial crisis and then the price went down to 29, wait, 33,000. And by the end of 97, it was down to 29,000. Then a big event happened. And that event was called January 1st of 1998. And on that day, AT&T called it the divestiture. I don't know if there's a term for Taiwan, but that means that the phone company became private and a lot of phone companies popped up in a short time. Now my number for this that I finally got, 29,000 dropped a zero to 2,900 after January 1st of, of 1998. And so I got a number, 090873 
零九零八七六。Numbers for phones back then were only nine digits, and the phone system was called AMPS, A M P S, an acronym because you pronounce it like a word, which stands for Advanced Mobile Phone System. Don't worry, there's going to be an abbreviation later in this video that's way more sissy than that. Okay, so at the time there was already GSM, GSM phones, and I think February of 1998, I decided to get one of those too. I got this. This is so cool. GSM. This is called Sony ZMD. Sony CMD Z1. And it has an antenna too. And to call out or answer it to turn the screen on, you pull the microphone down. Isn't that cool? So you can you can talk on with the microphone here and put the antenna up if you want. And a really cool feature is it had a record button here that would record and save it on your SIM card. But if you had a lot of SMS messages saved, then you wouldn't have much time to record. But the coolest thing about this phone is this button. It's a wheel and a button which can push in. So to type a message, you push the key that has the letter you want, and then you can scroll up like J. Then you can go K L capital J capital K capital L. And when you get good at it, you can type messages pretty quickly. My number for this was Ning Jo San Yi Chi Jo Er Baba Er. I chose this number carefully because think how easy it is to remember. Zero. Draw a square around around the pad, the keypad, nine three one seven nine, and then a U turn in the middle, two eight eight two. And that is still my phone number today. Oh, don't don't tell anybody your phone number on YouTube. I think nobody's gonna call me. All right, I doubt it. And here's the battery for it: lithium ion, a lithium ion battery. This one, this one had a a nickel metal hydride battery. Okay. So this was my first lithium ion battery. Wow, pretty cool. All right. So the reason I stopped using this after four years was because the connection between the microphone and the phone got kind of scratchy. So one time I was on the train talking on the phone and you have to kind of shake it to get the microphone to connect. And so I was talking on the phone going, and, and then someone looked at me like, <sighs> I thought, okay, maybe it's time to get a new phone. So my next phone was Sony J16. Same wheel, works the same way, almost the same interface. And that was the next one. In between, I had another one which I don't have anymore. And it was a Philips and it was crap. It had a voice recognition feature where you can put someone's number into your phone and then, and then record Peter. And then you want to call them. You're so, the, the big selling point was you're supposed to be able to just push a button and say their name. But it's like, push the button, Peter. 
and it says calling Angela. Okay, it was terrible. And the battery was kind of loose too. It didn't really fit well. So it would stay on all day. And then when you want to call out, it turns off. One time I was at a wedding reception and I wanted to call my student to tell him I would be a little bit late. And I, I called him, he answered, the phone turned off. Three times. And so I took the phone and twisted it about 90 degrees just to destroy it. I, I was done with that phone. Well, anyway, I got that phone for my parents to use when they visited in 1998. Nin 1999. And that thing the company strong-armed me into getting rid of my AMPS phone number. So I got a cool number, Ling Jo, 09-3333-7859. So that was my number for that phone. So I always had two numbers for a while. But that first one is still my number today, the one with the square and the U-turn. All right, so this phone was was good to me and I don't think there was any phone yeah there was one in between there was another one in between but it was it was not good and then I discovered a new phone system called PHS personal handy phone system really PHS was a system from Japan. You could see the antennas on top of buildings because it had four masts like this. And it was basically line of sight. If you were out in the middle of nowhere, you might have trouble getting reception. So they always had areas on their website map showing where the phone can be used. And I think they they shot themselves in the foot because the the FCC in Taiwan says that you you can only do a, an area at a time, a city or a shin, instead of specific places. Hey, go to the beach at Kanding. PHS works there now. Go to the mountains at some beautiful place. The PHS works there now. But the FCC says, no, you have to, you have to either provide service to the whole place or none at all. Well, this was the phone. And this screen was 120 by 144 resolution. And this one was 96 by 96. So when, when I would push the button to like, kind of light up the screen. It would have my kitty, Rainbow, at the time. And then this one would have a different picture of her. And there's a button here. Oh, that's just the power. I don't know what that was. There's some kind of hole here. I can't remember what that is. Anyway, it, it says J100. This was the PHS J100 made by Sanyo, imported from Japan. And it has a little mast, a little antenna. And my number for this was 0968. We'll talk about that later. Next one, PHS again, but this was G1000. <coughs> Sorry. It says PHS and GSM. So once again, the company is shooting themselves in the foot by offering GSM service. PHS was supposed to compete with that. So if you put a GSM card in, in there, you're probably going to end up using that most of the time anyway, unless you live in an area that has PHS. And this one has a little mast as well. And so 
I decided to get a second battery, the fat one, the big battery, but I got pink instead of the original color. Let's take the battery off and see what it looks like. There's the battery. And then here, you can see this kind of slot with the contacts at the bottom. That's where you put the GSM card in. You put the GSM card in and this pushes it against the contacts. And I used it, but I really wish PHS had taken off. I liked it. You turn your phone on and you can use it in seconds. Okay, next one. Friend came to my house, said, what's your Wi-Fi password? And so I told him. And then he started showing me his phone with Google Maps and everything. And I'm like, that is cool. I have to have one. And so I got it. Apple iPhone 3GS. The, the first thing that bothered me about this was that you couldn't use Bluetooth to send your, your phone ring to it from your old phone, which I didn't understand that Apple doesn't want you to use the Bluetooth to do that. And so that was the first disappointment. Oh, the one that I missed in between is Nokia 6500S, 6500 slide. You slide the whole thing open and then the keypad's at the bottom. That thing had a really nice camera. I wish I could find it, but I know it's around here somewhere. I didn't see it. It hasn't been long since I saw it last, but you can look at the picture. Anyway, the next thing that bothered me was you could share the Wi-Fi with someone. They called it hotspot or uh, tethering or something. But then iPhone 4 came out and they said, oh, iPad came out at the same time. And some kind of survey made people say, I'm not going to buy iPhone 4. I'm going to keep my 3GS and use the Wi-Fi tethering to buy it, to, to use iPad. And so Apple lifted a big middle finger and said, no. If you want to use Wi-Fi tethering, our new iOS system will not allow you to do that with a 3GS. And so that was the second thing that really bothered me about this phone. Then I had it inside this cover and the rubber stuck to it. I had to peel it off. And so even washing, even wiping it with a damp cloth it's still really sticky on the back. You could probably stick this on the wall and it would stay there for a second or two. The next thing that bothered me about this was suddenly there was an iOS update and then Google Maps is gone and YouTube is gone. And then they said, well, if you have the URL or the link, you can watch any YouTube video. Yeah, where's my channels? Huh? And apparently some people almost died in Australia because they got lost due to Apple Maps. But by the time the guy who had made that decision got fired, I was already ready for another phone. One guy that worked at HTC was telling me, oh, the best one is this, which is actually sold in the USA and not Taiwan. And so you have to ask for it. And, you have to pay cash because you can't, I don't know. Anyway, a friend, coworker, who goes scuba diving was showing me some of her pictures with this phone, Samsung uh, Galaxy S3. And she was like, oh yeah, this was beautiful. And this was beautiful. And I'm like, that screen is beautiful too. Where can I get one? So, Samsung S3. But this is the second one that I had. 
I recommended this to my girlfriend at the time and she got one too. The idea being that if, if something's wrong, I can figure it out. And then she suddenly got frustrated with it and said, this doesn't work anymore. And so she got a Sony phone. And then I took the, the plastic cover, the, the Baohu Mo, and went, whoosh, and peeled it off and said, look, it works fine now. She's like, hmm, well, I already have a new phone. Yeah. Well, when mine, you know, the battery started to get freaky and it got weird, I just switched to hers. But after she got the Sony, I kind of hid this so she wouldn't feel like something's missing or remember it. So when it came time, hey, new phone for free. And then finally that got weird the last time I went to see Ken Chang in Jai. And then I got this one. This is called Samsung J1 Prime. J1 Prime. This has eight gigabytes of storage, which I thought, yeah, I don't use that much. It should be enough. It wasn't. But part of the reason that I just off the cuff decided to buy it was because the girl at the phone store was really, really cute. I still remember her name too. And she's like, oh, well, if you just want to call and use a few apps, this should be right. And I'm like, I'll buy anything from you. Sucked. So a few months later, I decided to up to J7 Prime. And this is the phone that I still use today. There you go. This is what I'm using now. The J1 Prime, you can use to check messages or something, but if you actually turn it on and, and connect to the Wi-Fi, you get months worth of messages that you haven't seen yet. I wonder if this thing turns on. It, it vibrated. Whoa! This thing still works. Cool. I wonder what its battery level is after all this time. Wow, that's amazing. I only used it for, you know, three or four months before I really got, I got sick of storage space running out. Some functions may not work. Okay, what do I have here? Apps. All the originals and basically nothing that I installed. 55% battery. Wow. I guess turn it off. All right, so there you have it, friends. That's my phone story, my phone history. And now it's time for the cell phone story. Most people who say the word cell don't even know what it means. So I test people sometimes. What? You keep saying cell phone. What does cell mean? They're like, well, the phone is smaller than the old big ones. And cells are small, so that's why it's called a cell phone. And I'm like, nope. And then another thing is people will say, well, there's some mechanism inside the phone called cell that makes the phone work. And I'm like, nope, that's not it either. If you imagine a city map and then this building has an antenna on top. Well, there's usually three, but never mind that. The area in which the phone can be used is called the cell and they're 
set up in a way that it looks like a series of cells. In 1994, 95, I was lucky enough to work as a temp at AT&T. <clears throat> I did mostly word processing and things like that, but one of the things that I helped with was writing a little software so that potential or future users of AT&T products, the, the actual phone system that's in the, what they call central office, the great big cabinets of, of modules and stuff that you don't really see usually, that those things needed to practice to use them. And so I, I wrote some software using C++ to go along with their kind of like teaching materials to, to let you practice using that thing. And so one of the things that I worked on was cell switching. And it was interesting that the, the cell, if you start getting out of a cell, your signal drops. And then the system will automatically check neighboring cells to see where you are. And if the signal is better, it switches. And then a year later, I came to Taiwan, almost two years later, I came to Taiwan and started using this thing one time when I was talking on the train. On the train, you're moving quickly, right? Well, I heard the phone get kind of scratchy and then suddenly clear. And then I realized that was a cell switch. It went as I was moving. And so I worked all that time on, on cell switching ideas and things. And I never actually heard a cell switch before. I remember being so excited. I was kind of like, uh, wait, what were we talking about? So that was interesting. Now with GSM and better, it's all digital and you can't hear any cell switching, but it still happens. So that was really, really interesting. Now, why do I hate the word cell? Because telephone was shortened to phone for the big ones, like the one I showed you. But then you would say cell phone to be specific to say, that's not the old kind of phone. That's a cell phone, a cellular phone, a mobile phone. But you don't need to say that anymore. Now people say landline to mean the old kind of phone. So phone should just mean mobile phone or smartphone, unless you need to be specific. I'm using a camera now. Is it a digital camera? Yes. But I don't say digital anymore because every camera is digital. Unless you need to be specific, like just like landline, you say film camera if you don't mean digital. You don't say color TV anymore, do you? Back in the 70s, it was common to say, we have washing machines, microwaves, and color TVs in advertisements. You don't say color TV anymore because every TV is color. So that's why it bugs me when people say cell phone. Usually they don't know what it means and it's not necessary. It's ATM machine. ATM, the M already means machine, automated teller machine. ATM machine, automated teller machine machine. If you say money machine, that's okay. All right, so that's it. There's my take on the word cell and what cell actually means. Take care, friends, and be safe out there.
the iOS updated and then you can't use Google Maps or 